It is time for the final instalment of the Audi Ferex trilogy. Looking just at the circuit boards, there were more videos, but uh, this was just the circuit boards. And this particular one, let's bring the, the full image in. This particular one was, just like the previous one, very hard to remove from its mount because it's got these very large pins with lots of heat sinking, taking the heat away from the solder and it's a plated through hole. So it was quite difficult to remove, quite destructive, but I did remove it and got it out. So let's explore the circuitry. It's quite interesting. This was a double nighter. It was quite complex to reverse engineer. So there are five connections uh, going to the battery. One is the temperature sensor connection that goes to not just the NDC thermistor in the battery to tell this circuitry the temperature, but also the battery itself, if it detects that it's got a low charge, it can cut off the supply to the NDC thermistor and this will detect that as well, so it basically stops this operating. This means that you can cheat these tools by connecting a resistor between one of the negative pins here and the uh, the temperature sensing, a 10K resistor, but it's not recommended because many batteries rely on the power tool itself actually stopping using current when the voltage goes so low. They don't have a facility to... Uh, cut the current off themselves. That's done by these MOSFETs in the power tool. So this is the 20 40 volt battery system and in this case because it's a 20 volt tool they've literally just banged the two negatives together of the batteries and the two positives so they're in parallel. That's quite unexpected but you know what it's reasonable enough the batteries because they're either used in series or parallel and because they're kind of semi-balanced uh, battery wise certainly uh, by battery, not necessarily cell balanced, but battery balanced on the charger, it shouldn't really cause significant uh, current flow when they're joined together like that. There are two MOSFETs switching current to the load. There's a diode across that uh, load. Uh, that's the two connections going out here. Uh, there's a processor, mystery processor. And then, uh, well, let's just cut straight to the schematic. Things worthy of note, though. A Zener diode, a series of chain of resistors in the diode, and a couple of MOSFETs. This is the power supply section for the 5 volt power supply using a simple resistive limiter. It's quite clever. This circuit is just in line with the tool. The positive and negative come onto this board via these contacts and then go straight up. Uh, it looks for uh, current modulation when you pull the trigger on the tool, and that's how it knows to switch on. And when it does, it activates the circuitry, as you'll see in a moment. And that uh, then provides 5 volts to this and then it does the full enabling MOSFETs thing and then monitoring for loss of use of the tool and then it will cut back off again. It's quite complex. Uh, other things worthy of note, this LED position which and resistor, but the resistor's not needed because the LED is not there, but they don't actually make sense in the circuitry anyway, as you'll show, see in a moment. Uh, there's another Zener diode over here. There's one here for the 5 volt supply. There's another 5 volt one for a voltage monitoring supply. Not sure about that. You can uh, you can chime in with this. You can tell what you think it is. Let's get straight down to the circuit board. The full schematic. Okay, let's see if I can fit this in. Okay, and get maximum viewage because it's densely packed. So here are the battery connections, the two positive connections. Here are the two negative connections. And this arrangement here is emulating the tool being connected to that. So it's a motor in series of switch. In reality, it could be a variable frequency uh, trigger, but as soon as you turn it on, it's going to start passing current, and that's what this unit detects. So initially, what's the best way to start with this? It's a complex circuit. So initially, when you pull the trigger on the tool, uh, it connects the positive rail, the MOSFET's off, so it connects the positive rail to this line, and this line would normally be gently biased to the zero-volt rail, but... Uh, when you connect, pull the trigger on the tool, it takes this positive, and there's a capacitor here that allows just a small amount of current to flow as it, through this resistor as the capacitor charges up, but it's long enough that it turns this MOSFET on, which is an N-channel MOSFET, pulling to the zero-volt rail, and that pulls this positive channel, that its uh, gate resistors, to the negative rail, turning it on. So once this P-channel MOSFET is turned on, two things happen. Well, it just generally applies power to everything. Uh, but the power for the 5 volt supply goes through this diode, through these three current limiting resistors, three times 150 ohm to spread the dissipation because it is simply a resistive dropper. And then that gets regulated roughly to about 5 volts by this Zener diode with a couple of capacitors. And that then goes to the processor, but it also goes to the battery monitoring circuit. 
That also provides power via this red line here to a, a voltage monitoring circuit, I think. And then this circuitry here, which might be monitoring the MOSFETs. You can chime in this and tell me what you think. That's quite complex, though. But So the sequence of operation here is that when you do press the trigger in this, the power goes is coupled via this capacitor, turns this transistor on, this one on, gives it the 5 volt supply. The 5 volt, the processor then provides its own bypass 5 volt supply via this diode, and it can then bypass that and it can keep its own power supply on until it needs to turn it off. When it wants to turn it off, if it sees the situation that the tool's not being used, it can turn the take this uh, signal to this diode low and it will effectively let the system shut down. Um, it, when you pull the trigger and it powers up, it's going to monitor the battery. It's got the, the pink box here is the NTC thermistor in the battery going to the battery's negative, which is common to the battery negative here. Uh, but it's got a potential divider on this circuit board. It's got a 10K resistor, so you'll get a voltage, which in normal instances will be roughly half uh, of that 5 volts. It's going to be, say, about 2.5 volts that's coupled via this 10K resistor to the microcontroller over here by the, via these pink pads. And uh, if it sees that it's got a resistance in the correct range, the voltage is in the correct range, uh, and not too high, which might mean that the... Uh, battery pack has disconnected the thermistor and therefore it floats, allows it to float high and that means the battery is flat. Um, or it might be a, a out of range level, the battery might be too hot uh, or too cold and that will signal to the processor not to actually start the tool. But if everything's okay, it will then provide on this purple pin a signal over via this 100 ohm resistor to the two uh, parallel MOSFETs, I've just drawn one here, and they have a 10k pull down resistor and that will turn them on. At the point they turn on, effectively this line then goes to negative. So it's just as well that is uh, driving that positive. So otherwise it would try and turn itself off. Um, things where they have note here. I'm, I think this is for monitoring the voltage across the MOSFETs. When it's turned on, uh, this red line here is for current... Uh, quiescent current reduction. It means that when the battery pack is asleep, this red line actually turns off and uh, effectively it shuts down the processor by removing the 5 volt supply. It shuts down this voltage monitoring circuit and it shuts down this bit of circuitry and that bit of circuitry because it's got the 5 volt supply too. So it shuts everything down into a super low current quiescent state. When it's active though, this is presumably because it's a voltage divider, 200k and 20k, dividing it down to roughly about a tenth of the uh, battery voltage. Uh, that is going to the processor. That might be for monitoring battery voltage. Um, I don't think it needs to know that that has been disconnected, unless it wants to know that uh, this is turned off in any way, because then it's got control of that. It's a very strange thing. It might just be monitoring to see if it's in... A reasonable battery voltage range. Although the battery itself would be monitoring that. It's odd. Uh, the other bit of circuitry here that's of interest, when this supply becomes active, it turns on this MOSFET, which then allows this 10k resistor to couple up to that line. And uh, there's another uh, Zener diode here that caps it to a maximum of 5 volts and a capacitor and a very high value discharge resistor, and then it goes to the microcontroller. And it seems to be monitoring the voltage across the MOSFET. Now, my guess is that it might be for monitoring uh, overcurrent situation, where if too much current was drawn, it would see a higher voltage across there. That will be smoothed by this filter circuitry, and then it will actually indicate to the processor that maybe the MOSFETs have gone into thermal runaway or where the resistance increases. Or it could be that... Uh, there's just such a high current due to a stalled tool that it will actually uh, see a higher voltage across the MOSFET being dropped across the MOSFET and it'll actually turn the MOSFET off. The other thing it could do, I'm trying to work out how it turns off. How does it know that the tool is not in use? And uh, I know that when you trigger this, it stays active for a while, but um, I'm guessing that ultimately if the tool uh, is off, this will not. This would normally be pulled down to the zero volt rail. So if the tool was off, it would still look as though it was a zero volt rail. Uh, it may turn this MOSFET off briefly, and it may just look with this circuitry again. It may just look to see if there's a change in voltage because if it did turn this MOSFET off 
and the voltage didn't rise, uh, it would maybe indicate that this uh, the trigger had been released. It's quite a complex circuit. It takes a bit of puzzling to work it out. It's quite a clever design. The little rectangular block here with the question mark is the resistor and LED position. I'm not sure what was uh, going on there. Uh, the only thing I can think is that originally I thought, mm, no, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense why they'd have had that LED there. Maybe that's why it's linked out. There is a distinct uh, wire link just across that. But they have left the resistor in, even though it's actually completely not functional anymore. Strange. I wonder if it was just a change in design or a, mo a, uh, a circuit board design they used in something else that they just adapted slightly. And maybe there was slightly different track layout, and that was an actual active LED that lit from the bottom of the tool pack so you could see what you were doing. That's kind of done by the... Um, in the drill, that's done by the actual trigger mechanism does that. But that is it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this. The circuitry is quite complex. How do you think it detects that the trigger's been released? I think maybe it does pulse that MOSFET off briefly and just see how the voltage changes in that. But there is a capacitor there that would introduce a slight time delay. And if it was doing it regularly, you'd actually get a slight jitter of the drill. Um, very strange. But that is it. It's quite a complex circuit. Clever. I like the way it's very educational. The way they've got this shutdown circuit and how detecting a disturbance in that, no matter what tool is attached, if it's a simple switch and series of the motor, or it's a, in the case of this, it's a variable speed trigger, that triggers uh, this to actually wake up, brings the power to the processor, and then the processor holds itself on. Uh, very interesting. Neat circuit indeed. It must have taken some amount of experimentation designing, but uh, very educational, very informative.